Hey, welcome back to IndyK 2015. I'm here with Justin. Uh, we're here to talk about Cork the Volcano. Uh, tell us about it. Sure, so Cork um, originally started as the a way of getting kids kind of thinking like programmers, so it's about logic and sequencing. Um, but we also developed a piece of hardware, so that's an accessory to the iPad or to a computer. And that actually allows kids to kind of play and learn with their hands in the real world, and then that transfers into the video game for, for their play. So what is the experience like? What are they doing in the game itself? So in the game, uh, the goal is to kind of get the, these little golden puzzle pieces in each level. And they look at the problem, and then they have to then use the puzzle tiles in real life and actually come up with a solution. So that would be go left, go right, change into another animal, run, and then get the puzzle piece. So they'd program that with their hands, and then they'd go in the video game and actually tap through and see if they were correct. Oh, okay, so there's there's different the different pieces that you have are sort of like the commands. Yeah, they're kind of the, the moves. Uh, think about if you were ever playing Mario, mm -hmm. but you now have to plan out all of Mario's moves instead of just being able to use a controller. That's incredible. So what sort of brought the, the idea that you would have the commands outside the game itself? Um, a couple of things. I mean, research showed that children learn better when they, uh, it's called embodied learning, when they're learning with their hands as well as sight and sound. And the other thing, we had a museum exhibit that was sort of the same principle, but much more expensive and obviously not scalable. And we had that out. A lot of people said, you know, this is great for my children, but when they go home, they don't have anything like that. They're just swiping on their iPad. Like, could you give them something that's a little bit more, um, you know, it, it'll make them think a little bit more, but also uh, it makes me feel better that they're actually, you know, not just doing something mindless, that they're actually learning. So uh, with this, uh, it seems that you're very much looking into like education of children. Like, mm -hmm. how young are we looking at sort of like teaching them like programming skills? So um, on the box, it says six, six to ten years old, boys and girls. Um, but we found four and five year olds can play it if they play in pairs or with mom and dad. That's really amazing. So you've actually encouraged like a lot of parents to mm -hmm. to play along with the children. Uh, like, can you talk about like the the platform itself that you've actually built? For it. Sure. So it's um, it's called the play tray, and um, it has uh, 30 different tiles that or 30 different places you can put tiles in. It's Bluetooth, and each of the tiles has an NFC tag in it. So then you put that on the board. The board recognizes it and sends that into the game. So for the the different tiles, are you looking to maybe even expand those different tiles out that people can use for like different games, or it, for maybe like the next one that you're you're going to make? Yeah, so there's about 10 different answers to that question. <laughs> um, I, I will take your, your top five. All right, so top five would be one, um, yes, we're going to make more games that come with the starter set of tiles. So even though they're right now used as programming tiles, they're going to be used for something completely different in our next game. So it'll be a software download. Uh, we're also making new puzzles tiles themselves. So think about a music game where you have physical notes that you're placing down and then you're, you know, that's being sent to the game you're playing through. Um, and if you flip the board over, we're actually working on a couple of really cool things for the other side of the board that use uh, cards instead of actual tiles. So. Okay, so there's another side of the board as well. Mm -hmm. Like, how does the other side of the board work? Um, it works similar to the first. It's just that it accommodates uh, sort of a different play experience. And that's, that's very cool. And like, what would you do with the, the cards on the other side? Does it, you know, figure out what card you're actually putting down, or is there also like? The, the patterns, the way that the cards actually Yes, yeah, so it could be the orientation of the cards, which way they're facing, or if you and I, let's say, were playing a competitive game together, um, my cards would be face down, so I would know what they were, but you wouldn't know what they were, mm -hmm. and maybe you get to flip over one. Um, so it could be kind of a cat and mouse type experience, too. Um, I think it's uh, very interesting that you uh, focused on like early learning mm -hmm. for this. Uh, I think that uh, a lot of indie games usually focuses on, uh, you know, usually older, uh, an older audience, mm -hmm. but I, I really enjoy uh, that you're looking at a much younger audience. Why do you? Uh, how do you speak to? How do you speak to uh, that younger audience, or like what kind of like feedback do you get? Yeah, them? so we play tested with about 350 children, mm -hmm. uh, boys and girls, and, and that's kind of where I got the age range from. And that really came from just feedback on the character design, the gameplay difficulty, um, balancing, you know, pacing. Um, the trickiest part was actually teaching children who've never used it before how to use this weird sort of hardware device um, in conjunction with a video game that's sort of familiar to them. Uh -huh. And um, yeah, it, it, was, it was just a lot of um, brute force effort, I guess. There, was, there, was no, there were no shortcuts. Um, we, and we were developing the hardware at the same time we were developing Cork the Volcano. So it was also trying to figure out how do we make hardware that not only works with this, this, you know, this programming game, but is also expandable in some of the ways that we just spoke about. So.
that's that's fantastic. Uh, have you already seen like any results? Have have you gotten kids interested in actually programming their own, uh, their um, own games? We haven't. We don't, I don't know that far, um, but I do know that we have had some tests on that. Um, Puzzlets has actually increased children's logic and sequencing scores by up to twenty five percent. Um, in um, in school, so we did some school tests. And we're, we're doing oh, some more of those. That's uh, that's uh, fantastic. Yeah, I, I think some uh, parents will be very happy to see that happen. Yeah. Uh, so when can people actually get their hands on this game? Or so we, we actually launched two weeks ago. So two weeks ago, congratulations! Thank you. So we're on Amazon and Toys R Us right now, uh, ToysRUs.com, and of course DigitalDreamLabs.com, our own website. Well, there you go. If you happen to have a child or just a child at heart and want to get into a little programming, it sounds like this is definitely the both the game and the platform to start uh, picking up on. Thank Absolutely. you very much. Thank you.